Russians on motorcycles become serious problem for Ukrainian armed forces. The use of motorcycles by Russian occupiers at the front cannot be looked down upon. This statement was made by Dmitry Likovoy, spokesman for the Operational Strategic Group of Forces, Kortitsa, of Ukraine. Of course, you can approach this in the context of necessity is the mother of invention. However, we have already seen examples more than once when the enemy tries to adapt to the realities that arise. They use ATVs, as was the case in the winter, in the Tavricheski direction. Now they use motorcycles, when weather conditions allow it, he explained. According to him, a motorcycle gives the enemy the opportunity to gain time to get closer to the points where they can dismount and take a seat. How do they fight them? The first means is FPV drones. Drones are now very actively used in many manifestations. It is FPV drones, attack drones, drops, artillery and mortars that are aimed at hitting motorcyclists even when they are detected by aerial reconnaissance somewhere else on the other side of the field. It is very important to destroy them in advance because when they get closer, there may already be bad consequences, noted Dmitry Likovoy. As the Russian military runs low on purpose-made armored vehicles and increasingly turns to civilian vehicles, most notably golf carts and motorcycles, one Russian army brigade is making motorcycle instruction a routine part of its training regimen. The motorcycle school is real. One Russian blogger wrote in a recent post about the 5th Donetsk Brigade, which fights in and around the town of Krasnohorivka in eastern Ukraine. According to Forbes, the Russians began assigning large numbers of Chinese and Belarusian dirt bikes to frontline troops back in the spring. The bikes, along with Chinese Desert Cross all-terrain vehicles, golf carts, effectively are helping mitigate growing shortages of armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles as Russia's wider war on Ukraine grinds towards its 29th month and vehicle losses deepen. The Russians have written off more than 16,000 armored vehicles and other heavy weapons in Ukraine. That's more heavy equipment than many armies have in their entire inventories. The bike troops' assault tactics are simple. They ride as fast as possible across the mine-strewn no-man's land separating Russian and Ukrainian lines, hoping their mounts' small size and high speed will help them avoid detection by Ukrainian drones. If they manage to cross the mine and drone zone, they ditch their bikes and fight on foot. A new military speciality is appearing, a second blogger wrote, motorized rifleman. But the bike tactics, while sound in theory, haven't worked very well in the heat and stress of actual combat. Ukrainian mines and drones are everywhere, too thick in the air and under the ground for even the nimblest biker to avoid. Ukrainian partisans poisoned Russian soldiers in Mariupol of Donetsk. At least 12 Russian soldiers died in occupied Mariupol of Donetsk region after eating poisoned watermelons supplied by pro-Ukraine partisans, Mariupol mayoral advisor Petro Andriushchenko told Ukrainian TV broadcasters. Andriushchenko clarified that partisans did not directly hand over the poisoned watermelons to the occupants. Instead, he said, Russian settlers who had recently arrived in the occupied territories were hired to deliver the poisoned produce. Our people do not directly participate in the delivery of such dangerous gifts to the Russians, unlike last year, he said. There are always people who come from Russia looking to earn some money. He added that much of what the resistance movement does in Russia-occupied Ukrainian territories remains undisclosed. The operation was simple. It was clear that watermelons were being purchased for the military base. Andriyushchenko said, it was clear who was going to supply these watermelons. These people were sold a batch of watermelons at a low price, which then caused the intended damage. Local Russian authorities, the advisor said, confirmed the deaths of 12 soldiers and reported seven additional cases of incapacitated troops. Earlier this year, partisans in occupied Mariupol have told how they created an imaginary charming woman on a social media site to obtain information about Russian troops which they then used to poison them. Using the fake profile on the Russian social network Vikontakt, the partisans learned that vodka was particularly sought after by Moscow's soldiers as a ban on them buying it had been imposed in the city. They are so eager to meet women that their Vikontakt is like Tinder. A partisan told Kyiv Post on condition of anonymity. Another partisan, posing as a vodka seller, was then dispatched for the next stage of the operation. 
We did a little magic with a syringe, a partisan told Kiev Post on condition of anonymity describing how they poisoned the drink. They added that the person who bought the vodka from the partisan supplier had been thrown into a pit in order to find out who sold it to them, but they were confident they would not be traced, in part because of the winter weather.